Okay, double pendulum. This is not easy. Okay, I'm gonna set it up and I'm gonna work out the whole thing, but I think you should be able to see the path forward and how to get to the end. And I will post a link to another website, not mine, that does have a solution uh, so that you can get the solution. Let's see, I turn this a little bit. There. Okay, so here's the double pendulum. I have uh, two masses and then I have a string of length L1, L2, and then they're at some angle theta one and theta two. Now you can't use the plain momentum principle or Newtonian mechanics because you don't know the, you can find the gravitational force on these two masses, but you can't find these string forces because they depend on um, lots of things like how fast they're moving and the angles and all that stuff. So it's just not, it's not a doable thing. These forces are forces of constraint. This string makes it, this mass stay a distance L2 from that mass. That's all it does. And the same thing for L1. But it gets really complicated. So we're going to use the Lagrangian. So Lagrangian says this. It says L equals T minus U, where T is the total kinetic energy and U is the potential energy. Um, and then if I do that, I'm going to have these two variables, theta 1 and theta 2, then I have the following. The partial of L with respect to theta 1 minus the derivative with respect to time of the partial of L with respect to theta one dot equals zero. And then I had the same thing for uh, the other variable theta two. Okay. So this is what we want to do. So I have to get t and u in terms of theta 1 and theta 2, and that's not so easy. Okay. I mean, it seems easy, but it's not too... Well, let's just do it. Okay. I'm going to start with mass 1. <clears throat> so I, it's not obvious to see what the kinetic and potential energy are in terms of this angle theta, so I'm going to do it in Cartesian coordinates where it is much easier. So I'm going to say t equals 1 half m1 x1 dot squared plus y1 dot squared because I know if I that's the kinetic energy in terms of the x and y coordinate of this that's pretty easy right I take the derivatives and then I can get the potential well let's let's write it out the whole way plus one half m2 x2 dot squared plus y2 dot squared so that's the total kinetic energy I can do that uh, also, I can get the potential energy, u equals, um, let's say this is y equals zero, so it's going to be, I think I put it as, this is a negative y, I don't know why I did that, let's see, I don't think it's really going to matter in the end, let's say, yeah, that's right, so it's going to be negative m1, actually it's, it's going to be, m1 g y1 plus m2 g y2. That's right. Okay. That one's easy to do. But you see here I need to get, I can take the derivatives, I can get x1 in terms of theta1 and theta2 and then take the derivative. That's what I want to do. So let's get, let's say x1 is going to be equal to um, l1 sine theta 1. y1 is negative l1 cosine theta 1. x2 equals x1 plus l2 sine theta 2. This is the difficult one. So this is why we're using Cartesian coordinates. Because the position of mass 2 depends on this angle with respect to mass 1. I don't want to define this angle from something else because it doesn't make any sense. This mass depends on that mass. So I can write that in terms of Cartesian coordinates pretty easily. And the same thing for y2. It's going to be equal to y1 minus l2 cosine theta2. So I have the Cartesian coordinates, but to put in here, this is pretty easy. Right? Y1, I just put in this. Y2, I just put in this, but where Y1 is at. So I could write it out. Okay. 
and in fact let's do that so let's say x2 is going to be equal to l1 sine theta 1 plus l2 sine theta 2 y2 equals negative l1 cosine theta 1 minus l2 cosine theta 2 so up here I have y1 and y2 in terms of theta 1 and theta 2 that's easy okay it's the kinetic energy of this term okay so let's take the derivative of x1 x1 dot is going to be equal to uh, L1 cosine theta 1 times theta 1 dot. Right? Don't forget, when I take the derivative of L1, there's, it's a constant. When I take the derivative of sine theta, it's cosine theta. But I have to take the derivative of the thing inside, which is theta. So I get this theta 1 dot, too. Uh, then I can do uh, y1 dot. It's going to be equal to negative, oh, it's going to be positive, right? So cosine, derivative, cosine, sine. It's going to be positive. It doesn't really matter in the end. L1 sine theta 1, theta 1 dot. Now you see what happens. When I take x1 dot squared plus y1 dot squared for this term up here, I get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. So this whole term is going to be L1 squared theta 1 dot squared. So it's pretty easy. Okay. I don't know where to put that. Let's just write this. x1 dot squared plus y1 dot squared is going to be equal to uh, L1 squared theta 1 dot squared because the sine squared is canceled. Okay. <clears throat> now, not so trivial for uh, x2 plus y2 squared. So let's take the derivative of this. x2 dot squared. I'm not going to do the whole thing. You can tell I'm going to run out of the board pretty fast. I'm not going to finish this problem. Okay, x2 dot squared is going to be, let's use this one right here. It's going to be, let's just do x2 dot. Uh, L1 cosine theta 1 theta 1 dot I'm going to run down space now I got it and go all the way over here okay uh, plus L1 L2 cosine theta 2 theta 2 dot And then y2 dot is going to be equal to negative L1 sine theta 1 theta 1 dot minus L2 sine theta 2 theta 2 dot. Okay, so now you see what's going to happen when I square these. I'm going to have a cosine theta 1 sine theta 2 term in there and a cosine theta 2 sine theta 1 term. So, so I am going to get a L1 theta 1 dot squared because I'm going to get this times plus this squared plus this squared. So I do get some canceling, but it's not all going to cancel. So my kinetic energy term is not good. I mean, it's not bad. You can do it, but it's a little bit messier. And I'm running out of time because I can't handle 10 minute videos. Uh, so but once you get that, you get the kinetic energy in terms of uh, theta 1 dot, theta 2 dot, and theta 1, theta 2, and the potential energy is easy. Then you can start, now we have the hard part, taking the derivatives. Th I'm not going to take these derivatives, okay? But you, it's not, okay, this is pretty bad, I meant. Uh, once you do that, the whole point is I want to get theta 2 dot, uh, double dot equals theta 1 double dot equals. I want these expressions for these two things. And it can be as messy as you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, if, As long as I can calculate the second derivative of theta 2 dot, then I can say theta 1 dot equals theta, well, theta 1 dot 2, theta 1 dot 1 
plus theta one double dot dt. I can use this, the Euler method, to find the new angular velocities because I know the angular acceleration. And then I can do that again to find the new angular position and then do the whole thing again and again and again. So I can make a numerical calculation out of this. So yeah, I didn't finish this Lagrangian problem, but I did set it up and I gave you a way to do it. Uh, if you've never done this before, I, could, I have another video on that. And I'll post a link to the video to a website that shows the actual solution for theta 2 dot and theta 1 dot so that you can program it.